Hey everybody, welcome to SPSS with Amy Gates. In this particular video, we're going to explore graphing and also descriptive statistics using SPSS. The data file that you're looking at now is called stat underscore grades, and this file contains variables and information about students in a class, such as their gender, their ethnicity, their year in school, their previous GPA, their IQ, and so on. To learn more about the variables in this data set, we first need to click on Variable View. When I click Variable View, it gives me a list of all the variables contained in this data set. It also gives me an idea of what kind of variable each one is, such as gender, which is a nominal variable. It is also a discrete variable. And further, I can see that the values, or the labels of gender in this case, are one for female and two for male. The same is true for ethnicity, also a discrete variable, and has labels of 1 through 5 for American Indian through Hispanic. I also have continuous variables in this data set, such as IQ and previous GPA. These are both scale values, meaning that they're numerical. Now let's go back to data view and take a look at graphing. Let's suppose the first thing I want to do is I would like to make a graph of a single discrete variable. I'm going to choose ethnicity to look at. Ethnicity is a discrete variable and it can take on values from 1 to 5. And we saw that those values are just labels for the different ethnic groups. To make a graph of this single discrete variable, I can click on Graphs, Chart Builder, and you can see that I've been using SPSS before, and so whatever I did last time is still in here, and that doesn't matter. You can just click on Gallery to give you a list of all the different choices you can choose from. And I'm going to use the mouse to move this stuff back over where it was so that it's not there anymore. Now, my first step is to think to myself, what is the best graph that I could use to describe a discrete variable like ethnicity? I know I've got five groups, and I know that someone looking at the graph is probably going to want to see something like what's the distribution, how many, or what is the percentage of each ethnic group, and so on. So I'm immediately thinking that probably a pie chart is going to be my best bet. So I can take and drag and drop by clicking my mouse and holding it down. I can drag this pie chart here into my active preview area. It just erases whatever was there in the beginning. This is a drag and drop utility, which means that anytime you want to choose a different graph, you have to drag it into this area. Now the next step is I know that I want to look at ethnicity. Remember, if I'm making a graph of only one discrete variable, I only want to bring one variable onto my graph. So I want the slices of my pie to represent the different ethnicities, and I'm going to drag ethnicity over down into that x-axis area, sometimes called the independent variable or the x-axis. In our case, we only have one variable, and so this is the only variable we're going to drag over. Our next step is to properly label our graph by using the Titles and Footnotes option. I'm going to click on this tab, and I also can see over here on the right-hand side SPSS is keeping track of all the things I'm doing and it's going to allow me to make any changes or alterations to my graph using the element properties box. But first, I want to create the option of adding a title to my graph. And look what happens when I check this title box. SPSS adds the title option to my little elements over here to the right. I can also add a subtitle. Notice that now it's added a subtitle option. And I can even add a footnote if I want to. And now it's added the footnote option. Now that I've added all my options, I need to fill the content in. So I'm going to scroll up, and I'm going to start here at the x-axis. Let me actually scroll down a little bit. Ah, there we go. We're, we're actually quite fine with our x-axis. We know we want it to be ethnicity. So I'm going to go down to the title. In this case, my title is the ethnic groups in our class, because this is our class data. 
Now, after I create a title or make any changes to this area, I have to apply those changes in order for them to stay. So I'm going to click Apply. Keep in mind that when I apply the changes, I'm not going to see them over here. I'm only going to see them when I create the final graph. Now I'm going to scroll down to my subtitle. I want to put my name on here, but your subtitle can actually represent more information if you want it to. For example, instead of my name, maybe I wanted to put the name of the data set. Maybe I wanted to put from data set grades under, I'm sorry, stat underscore grades, I believe it's called, dot SAV. And this will tell somebody which data set I've gotten my information from. And let's make it perfect. Now I'm going to apply that. Finally, I gave myself the option of a footnote, and maybe there is where I want to put my name or any other information. Remember, when you build your graph, the key thought you want to have in your mind is, what do I want my viewers to see? and what information do I want them to gain from this graph. Now I click Apply, and I'm going to click OK. SPSS creates this graph for me. Let's scroll down so we can have a good look at it. Here's my title, the ethnic groups in our class, from data set stat underscore grades, that's my subtitle. Here's my footnote by Amy Gates. Here are the different ethnicities in the class, they're color coded. But I feel like something's missing. Whenever you make a graph, you want to take a good look at it and think, is everything there that I want to see? In this case, I would actually like to also see the percentage values of these pie, pie slices. So I can double click this graph to add further options. It's a very cool SPSS option. Double clicking and it pulls the graph up in a separate window and then I can choose options if I want to change the title or add text or footnotes and I can also choose elements. In the elements option I can show the data labels. Well that's exactly what I want to do so I'm going to click that and the default is the percent which is what I want. So I don't have to make any changes here I'll just close it and if you want you can even move this over so that you can see that what you want has already happened so you're good to go and you can just close it up. Now if I click outside of this edit box it'll recreate my chart for me. And now it's all set and ready to go and I can look at all the different ethnicities in the class and I can see their percentages. And that's exactly what I wanted as a graph of my discrete variable ethnicity. If I wanted to paste this into a Word document, I would right click in this area, choose copy special. Now I don't want to copy it as any of these things. I want to copy it as an image then click OK. Once I copy it as an image, I can open up a Word document and I can paste it right into that Word document. And there it is. In our next example, we're going to create a graph of a continuous variable. In this case, I'm going to choose previous GPA. It's definitely a continuous variable. It's got all kinds of decimal values and it can take on any values. Remember, discrete variables can only take on whole number values, whereas continuous variables can take on any value. Again, to create a graph, I'm going to click on Graphs, Chart Builder. And in this case, I don't want ethnicity anymore, so I'm going to move that back. And I'm going to go back to my gallery, and I'm going to think, okay, I want to look at previous GPA. What's my best graph for creating this? I know a pie chart's not going to work at all. I don't want to use anything that's, you know, generally used for discrete variables. I want to use something that will display continuous data better so I can take a good look at it. One option is a histogram. I'm going to choose this basic histogram and I'm going to drag it over to get rid of the pie chart. Now again, I'm only looking at one variable. In this case, previous GPA. So I'm going to drag my previous GPA right down here to my, vein, my main variable area. That was a tongue twister. And then I'm going to start filling in all my element properties. So again, I've chosen my histogram. I dragged it over. I'm only plotting one variable, my continuous variable. So I drag that down here. Now I'm going to click on titles and footnotes. I'm going to give myself a title and I'm going to give myself a footnote in this case. Notice that both of those options have become visible. 
Now if I back up here, you can see that I can click on the x-axis and it'll show me what's written there, which is previous GPA. I can update that or augment it by, and I can even change it. In this case, I'm going to have previous GPA for the class. I'll just add that in and I'll apply it. For the y-axis, right now it, it says histogram or frequency, but I actually want to have something called for the students because that's what we're looking at here, students. I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to continue. My title is going to be previous GPA for the class of students. I'll apply that and then my, my footnote's just going to be my name. Again, you can add any one of these things. You can have two titles, a subtitle, two footnotes, and you can make them whatever you want them to be. Now I'm going to apply, and then I'm going to click OK. All right, let's take a look at what SPSS made. All right, great. Here's my histogram. Notice my title is here, and my histogram shows me the number of students that have certain GPAs in the class you can tell that the mean is about 2.78 and that kind of makes sense because the, the mass or the most number of students have a GPA somewhere in this re region. So that's an example of how to make a histogram for a continuous variable. Finally, in my next graph, I want to use two of my variables. So far I've only made graphs with a single variable, but in this case I want to use two variables. So again, I'm going to create a chart, and in this case, I want to see how gender is affecting how people are doing on the first quiz. Just curious, see if it makes any difference. I want to get rid of that, so I'll move that back. So how do I want to look at that? I think a bar chart makes the most sense when looking at gender and comparing it to quiz one points. So I'm going to drag the bar chart over. I want to put gender in my x-axis because I want to look at the difference between the two genders. And what I want to look at for each of those genders is the quiz one point. So I'm going to drag that into the y-axis. Notice in this example, I actually have two of my variables making this graph. But in my first two examples, I only had one. Now again, I can click on titles and footnotes and give myself a title and a footnote and anything else I want. And then I come over to the right and I add all my content in here, my labels. So let's start with the x-axis. Right now the x-axis says gender. And if I want, I can be specific, male or female. I can add that in and click apply. For my y-axis, it says mean quiz one points. I like that. That's what I want it to say, so I'm going to leave that alone. My title is going to be Quiz 1 Points by Gender, because that's what I'm looking at. I'll apply that. And for my footnote, I'm going to put using data set stat underscore grades dot SAV. And I'm going to apply that, and I'm going to click OK. And again, SPS is going to generate another graph for me. But in this case, my graph has both my variables. It has my gender and the quiz scores. And you can right away see that females are doing a little bit better than males on the quiz one score. And so this is giving you information. The key to making graphs is to think to yourself, what information do you want to display? And how can you best display that information? Finally, if you want to do any kind of analysis or descriptive statistics, you simply click Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. In this case, I can actually move all the quiz scores over to the right and take the statistical value for them. I can include mode if I want. I can include min and max. And when I click Continue and OK, SPSS will generate all the descriptive statistics for all five of my quiz scores at once so I can compare them. That's it for this lecture. Another one's coming soon. Thanks for joining me.